Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Usatin, a family physician and lead author of Skin Surgery, A Practical Guide. During this program, I will cover the principles of electrosurgery and then demonstrate how to perform the most common office applications of electrosurgery. Electrosurgery is used in skin surgery to destroy benign and malignant lesions, to control bleeding, and to excise tissue. Electrodesiccation is the method of electrosurgery in which the tip of the electrode touches the skin. Electrofulguration is a method of electrosurgery in which the tip of the electrode is not touching the skin and the electricity sparks from the electrode to the skin. The name comes from the Latin word fulgar, which means lightning. Electrocoagulation is the method used to stop bleeding. Electrosurgery has the following advantages. It is simple to use and easy to master. The technique is rapid. It controls bleeding while cutting or destroying tissue. The equipment is compact and affordable. When used for tissue destruction, sterile conditions or sutures are not needed. It is useful for a wide variety of skin lesions. Fortunately, the risks of electrosurgery are preventable. These safety risks include electric shocks, burns, or fires. As with any surgery, scarring may occur. Hypertrophic scars are more likely to occur if too much power is used. The smoke may carry viral particles so that a smoke evacuator should be used when treating warts. Electrosurgical artifact can be seen at the margins if it is used to excise tissue for a biopsy. I will demonstrate the use of a scalpel for biopsies and then use the hyphricator for electrocoagulation. If you use alcohol to prepare the skin, let it dry completely before performing electrosurgery to prevent pyrotechnic shows. Electric shock can be prevented by touching the patient with your non-treatment hand and not breaking contact during the treatment. Also avoid contact with exam table parts that are metal. To avoid the transmission of infection through the electrode, use disposable electrodes and wear gloves. If the lesion is of viral origin or the patient is infected with HIV or hepatitis, use a smoke evacuator, wear a surgical mask, such as this, and use eye protection. The most important treatment principle is to use the minimum electrical power needed to create the desired effect. In this program, we will provide you with suggestions about which power settings to use. The power settings are measured in watts and visible on this instrument. If you are not sure where to start, start with low power and increase the power until you get the desired effect. In general, the power setting needed for coagulation is higher than the setting for tissue destruction. The use of too much power may increase scarring. The hyphricator has high and low terminals. All the procedures we will be demonstrating will be performed with the low output terminal and the sharp tip electrode. We will begin with the demonstration of the treatment of benign skin conditions. Cherry angiomas are benign lesions. Patients may want them removed for cosmetic reasons. I'm doing this procedure without anesthesia because the cherry angioma is small and the anesthesia may hurt more than the actual electrodesiccation. I started with 1.5 watts and did not get sufficient destruction. I am now turning up the power to 2 watts. When not using anesthesia, it helps to stabilize your hand against the patient's body or face so if the patient moves, the electrode moves with the patient. I touch the electrode to the cherry angioma until the red color blanches and then activate the electrode. The red color turns to brown. A temporary faint pink blush surrounding the treated lesion is a normal response. I use local anesthesia for this larger cherry angioma and start with a shave excision prior to electrodesiccation. 1% lidocaine with epinephrine is injected through a 30 gauge needle to produce anesthesia and minimize bleeding. 
Using a very fine needle and injecting slowly will minimize the pain. The epinephrine causes blanching of the skin around the lesion and lets you know that you are anesthetizing the appropriate area. Also, I am watching the lesion become raised, which will help for the shave excision. This is a clean procedure that can be done wearing non-sterile gloves. As long as I don't touch the scalpel with my gloves or hand, the surgical procedure remains sterile. I am cutting straight across the lesion with a number 15 blade scalpel using a gentle sawing motion. I'm using the center of the scalpel as opposed to the tip of the scalpel. This gives better control of the shave biopsy. The middle of the blade is sharp and easier to control. The hyphricator is now used to destroy any remaining vascular tissue and produce hemostasis. As I roll the cotton tip applicator down across the lesion, the pressure produces hemostasis and a dry field so that electrocoagulation is more effective. It is very difficult to electrocoagulate a pool of blood. If there is insufficient power, you can use the controls on the handle or the electrosurgical device to turn up the power until adequate electrocoagulation is achieved. We use the sharp electrode to treat facial telangiectasias. Touch the electrode to the most central vessel and compress the vessel before activating the electrode. A short burst of power at approximately 2 watts is adequate. It is helpful to warn the patient before touching the electrode to the skin so that the patient is prepared for the sharp sensation. Once the vessel is compressed with the electrode, then electricity can be transmitted for about a second. When there are many telangiectasias, it is helpful to test this procedure out on a few of the vessels and let the patient decide whether additional treatments are desired. Tearing of the eyes may occur as a reaction to the treatment near the eyes. The vessels are currently less prominent and you can see little whitish spots where the electrode was activated. The white spots are small and superficial so that there should be minimal to no scarring from this procedure. This is not a good method to treat telangiectasias on the legs. This simple benign seborrheic keratosis may be destroyed without sending tissue to the pathologist. The area is first anesthetized with 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. Electrofulguration is performed lightly across the whole keratosis. Electrofulguration produces the most superficial tissue destruction and is therefore a good method for treating very superficial lesions. Now we should be able to wipe away the residual tissue with a gauze pad. This is called sponge curatage and may be done with a wet and or dry gauze pad. Residual fragments or bleeding points can be treated by electrosurgery. I have chosen 4 watts to complete the procedure. This method produces little to no scarring because we have removed the seborrheic keratosis at the epidermal level and minimized damage to the dermis. The treatment of viral warts is similar to that of seborrheic keratosis. Warts may penetrate more deeply into the dermis so that additional power is needed for electrodesiccation. The wart is first desiccated before curatage. Scrape off the tissue with a skin curette. Be careful to not go too deeply into the dermis because of the underlying nerves and blood vessels and an increased risk of scarring. Electrosurgery is best for numerous tiny skin tags. They may be treated quickly in one visit. The lesions dry up and fall off over the next few days. One to three watts are applied for less than one second. If the lesion is unusually large or looks suspicious, it should be biopsied and sent to pathology. These photographs show the treatment of a pyogenic granuloma on the lip that started in pregnancy. Here is the pyogenic granuloma. This next photograph shows vasoconstriction and swelling during administration of local anesthesia. The shave excision is completed with a number 15 scalpel. 
This image shows electrocoagulation with the hyphricator and a disposable electrode. Note that the cotton-tipped swab is rolled ahead of the electrode to dry the field immediately before the electrocoagulation. Here is the full electrodesiccation of the base of the lesion and complete hemostasis. Electrosurgery is a great method to stop the bleeding that occurs during biopsies and excisions. We will demonstrate this with shave, punch, and elliptical excisions. Here is the shave biopsy of a possible basal cell carcinoma. Electrosurgery is a particularly useful method for hemostasis when it is desirable to destroy any remaining tissue after the shave specimen is removed. This may be beneficial after removing a vascular lesion, a benign nevus, or a suspected basal cell carcinoma. The skin is anesthetized with 1% lidocaine and epinephrine. The differential diagnosis for this flesh-colored papule is an intradermal nevus versus a basal cell carcinoma. Hemostasis is obtained using a cotton tip applicator for pressure and then electrocoagulation. The pathologist determined that this was a basal cell carcinoma. This 6 mm punch is rotated back and forth between the fingers while the pressure is being placed against the skin. The punch biopsy specimen is removed by snipping off the core at the base with iris scissors. Good hemostasis can prevent hematomas, infections, and dehiscence. The lack of bleeding makes it easier to visualize the skin edges while closing the defect. This pigmented lesion is suspicious for a melanoma. A number 15 blade on a scalpel handle is used to cut the fusiform excision. The excision is performed in two passes. The biopsy specimen is then removed from one edge to the other using a hemostat to grasp the corner of the ellipse. The lesion is cut off in the subcutaneous fat. The traditional instrument for performing excisions and shave biopsies is the scalpel. It is inexpensive, the blades are disposable, and the cuts are clean. The scalpel causes no heat-induced tissue damage that could obscure the pathology specimen. Using electrosurgery in place of the scalpel has the advantage of facilitating hemostasis while cutting. However, the lateral heat produced by electrosurgical instrument can cause tissue damage that might cause slow healing and artifact on the edges of the biopsy specimen. The hyphricator is used to stop the bleeding before the skin is repaired. Pressure with gauze may dry the field so that electrocoagulation is more successful. Bleeding vessels can be touched directly with the electrode. In this case, the handle is covered with a sterile sheath so that the operator may continue to use his sterile gloves to sew up the lesion. Sometimes electrocoagulation needs to be repeated after undermining the skin. The ultimate goal is to have a dry field prior to repairing the defect. This may prevent a hematoma, infection, or dehiscence of the wound. The final pathologic diagnosis was a melanoma in situ. Curatage and desiccation is a very good method of treating a basal cell carcinoma that was diagnosed with a shave biopsy. It is not the treatment of choice when the initial biopsy was a punch biopsy. This basal cell carcinoma was the lesion that we saw in the shave biopsy segment earlier in the program. Two weeks have transpired since the original biopsy. The soft basal cell tissue is easily curetted and differentiated from the normal skin tissue surrounding it. This makes a little bit of a crater. The curette finds out all the abnormal tissue. We often find that the basal cell carcinoma was larger than we could initially see. We are using 7 watts and burning the base. A small rim of normal tissue is also electrodesiccated. This procedure is repeated three times to get the highest cure rates. Recurrence rates of up to 10% may be seen after this procedure, but with greater experience, the recurrence rates should be lower. Curatage and desiccation are best performed on lesions that occur 
on the trunk or extremities. This technique is not the preferred method on the nose, around the eyes, and in the nasolabial folds. Electrosurgery is a powerful and versatile tool for skin surgery. It is important to get to know your own electrosurgical unit through experience treating your patients. Careful practice should allow you to safely use the power of electrosurgery in your office.